Good evening, HQ Raters. Welcome back to our Transcendent Trivia Tournament. I'm Beric. It's great to see you and great to be you tonight playing our beautiful game where using your head can get you bread and using your finger is what I now call giving it a robby. Speaking of whoops, did you see this afternoon's HQ? The question about Vasily Kandinsky, whom I heard myself mispronouncing as Valacy and then still made a joke about his name having silly in it. Oh dear, who's silly now? I mean, to be fair, I also had to say Katsushika Hokusai in the same question. Sometimes there's just too much sesquipedalianism on HQ. However, none of that nonsense is going to put us off our game tonight. We have 12 questions from easy to hard. You have 10 seconds for each. Get them right and move on. Get all 12 right and you win or split today's prize. £1,000. Almost enough to buy an England kit in time for Monday's match. And if you're not supporting England, then you can find something much better to spend the money on. And as I mentioned this afternoon, as of now, the UK and Ireland are the first in the world to have the Friends feature full time. So you can use answer sharing to see your friends' answers and let them help you along if you trust them. Now, I trust you're all ready because here comes Q1. Which events preceded a funeral in the title of the 1994 Hugh Grant movie? Seven bar mitzvahs, nine get-togethers, four weddings. And no partridges in a pear tree. If you chose get-togethers, then I'm afraid you're skipping right to the funeral on this one. Tying a quadruple knot, it's four weddings. For the answer there, 159,714 of you got it right. Yes, Richard Curtis's romantic comedy propelled Hugh Grant to fame, something he's been apologizing for ever since. Q2, in which city would you find the landmark, the Taj Mahal? Swansea, Madrid, Agra. A landmark question, Q2. I need a sat-nav to find my way out of a jacket. But even I know it's not in Swansea, the tourism capital of India, it's Agra. Yes. How many of you agoraphobic? None, 151,639 of you got that right. We lost a few of you to Madrid, sorry about that. Yes, the Taj was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983, but that didn't stop it being copy and pasted by Brighton's Royal Pavilion. Shout outs in a moment, but I want to solicit your opinion on something. Do you think we should do a little bit of a World Cup special? Tell me right now in the chat, thumbs up or down. Nothing crazy, just a bit of World Cup fun. What do you reckon? Thumbs up, thumbs down, World Cup special? Looks like thumbs up. Okay, good, we will do it on Monday. Right, here comes Q3. Where was William Shakespeare born, married and buried? Sonnetsville, Shanghai, Stratford-upon-Avon. Look out, it's the old Bill. Well, he sure churned out the sonnets, but he never lived in Sonnetsville. In fact, I think we just made that up. And leaving Shanghai to Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson, it's Stratford-upon-Avon. Stratford upon Avon, yes, and even 145,625 of you got that right. Yes, his stories took place across the world, but Bill popped out, popped the question, and popped his clogs in the same place. From fetal to fatal. And now, a big hello to Liam's dad from Northolt, to Danny and Charlotte in Middlesbrough, to HQ Memes, hello, to Charlotte and Katie, to Caden who's finished his psychology exam, well done, to Billy White, and we've avoided significant mankini trauma for everyone by saying that, to Blake and the Comrec team who are Andy, Ash, Chloe, Dan, Toby, Mike and Emily, to all of you, hello, and if you wanted to shout and haven't got one, I will fit you in as soon as I can, promise. Here comes Q4. Which of these Simpsons characters is typically portrayed with a beehive hairstyle? Krusty the Clown, Troy McClure, Marge. Beehive yourselves. Three distinctive hairstyles, but who's rocking the blue beehive here? The gravel-voiced mama herself, it's Marge. 
No argy bargy for this one because 137,336 of you knew it. Yes, Marge was modelled on Matt Groening's mother and has been voiced by Julie Kavner for all 643 episodes. Okay, something different for you now. Q5. Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire is particularly associated with which of these meat products? Sausage rolls, pork pies, potted beef. Tasty question, this one. It wouldn't be a game of HQ without a sausage or two. But we're looking for a different kind of answer here. No word of a lie, it's pork pies. Porky Pies for the prize. 124,052 of you got that right. Yes, the town was a popular hunting spot in the 1700s, leading to the creation of a pie hunters could carry with them. All right, Q6. An agar is a traditional accessory worn around which part of the body? Waist, head, ankle. Accessorize for a shot of the prize. It may have gal in the name, but it's very much a man's accessory. A black cord made of goat hair, it's worn around the head. Yes, heading to victory. Ooh, 48,568 of you. Yes, we lost 75,000 of you on that one. Not quite savage, but pretty mean there. It's primarily worn by Arab men. The agal keeps the wearer's headscarf in place, which keeps the Arabian sunshine out. Okay. Something different again. Q7. Harvey Nichols first opened a store outside London in which English city? Leeds, Manchester, Bristol. Question of Harvey Nichols, sweetie darling. Harvey Nichols. The Knightsbridge store opened its doors in 1831. But which of these cities was the next to get Harvey nicked? The birthplace of soda water, it's Leeds. Yes, leading on, oh, just 17,500 of you got that right. We lost 32,000 of you there. Another one bordering on the savage, but I'm not going to call it. Let's see what happens later on. They have chains all over the world now, but the Leeds store only opened in 1996. OK, Q8. Who was the last England player to score more than one goal at a World Cup tournament? Peter Crouch. Steven Gerrard, Michael Owen. World Cup fever. The England team only scored two goals at the last World Cup. Come on. But who was the last to match that on his own? The sulkiest of scousers, it's Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard, the answer we wanted, 4,742 of you. We lost 13,710. Let's call that savage. Go on. Savage question. Jorus Klausimus. Yes. Savage question for a savage game. Gerrard scored two goals in the 2006 World Cup, but then totally spooled his penalty against Portugal. Spooned, I mean, not spooled. Spooned it against Portugal. Yes, he did. And now we're going to move on to a spoonful of Q9. Which historical figure is considered the founder of Andorra? Charles of Anjou, Napoleon, Charlemagne. Andorra, not Angora. That's something completely different. Andorra. It's just his size, but Napoleon had nothing to do with the teeny country. Part Pokemon, part bubbly drink, it's Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Yes, 2,480 of you got that right. Well done, I thought that was going to be harder for you, but legend has it that several thousand Andorans helped the Franks win a battle and Charlemagne proclaimed them an independent nation. Good on them. Here comes Q10. Which of the following was formed in a London restaurant in 1905? The Vegetarian Society, the Magic Circle, the Musicians' Union. Dine out on this one, but only if you get it right. Three groups the rest of us love to hate, but who got together over some capital cuisine? Pulling a reservation out of thin air, it was the Magic Circle. And magically, 1,867 of you got that right. Well done. 
The club may have been founded in 1905, but women had to wait till 1991 to be allowed in the circle. Shame on them. Okay, two to go. 1,867 players. Which of these Game of Thrones actors appeared alongside Amelia Clarke in Me Before You? Charles Dance, John Bradley, Natalie Dormer. None of them have shared a scene with Khaleesi, but who did the next best thing in Me Before You? The fierce frowner himself is Charles Dance, dancing their way to victory 934 people. Prepare now to pay off your debts because we are Lannistering on to the final round. Something like 160,000 of you started the game. 934 of you clever boots, including 33 players who used extra lives to get back in, are coming with us to what it all hangs on, Q12. Which of these payment systems was partly created to help the founder sell his glassware? Square, Stripe, PayPal. This is what it all hangs on. They all make blowing our money easier, but which of them was founded by a frustrated glass blower? PayPal, it's been around for ages, but it couldn't help Jim McKelvey sell one of his glass pieces to a customer. Card payments for all, it's Square for the win. Square the winning answer, and we have 220 winners tonight. Well done, you beauty cuties. Two hundred and twenty of you got all the way through that twelve question trivia challenge. I am plenty impressed by that. Everything from glass blowing to Game of Thrones, Richard Curtis movies, we had it all. And you now have four pounds and fifty five pence or four pounds fifty four to take home. Well done to Trivia Tribe, to Tiny Tick Tom, I can't believe I just said that, to Higgs Charlie, to Homo and Emo. All of you who won, you have done fantastically well. Well played, well played everyone. Lovely to see you, seeing me, seeing you, seeing you, seeing me. Oh, you know what I mean. I am Beric Livingston. Find me at Beric Living. Find us at HQ Trivia UK. Tell us how you're doing and how you did. We will be back soon. The next game is tomorrow at 3 p.m. And it's another special one. Don't want to give anything away, but for cat lovers, it's going to be a golden show. So join us for another shot at that grand prize and another great grey cell challenge. Until then, have a great night. Goodbye. <laughs>